Well, we got a big one. Yeah, a real actual big name who matters a lot has just agreed to terms with the Washington Commanders. Bobby Wagner, the all-pro linebacker, who, by the way, still has it, still good, has agreed to terms, one-year deal with the Commanders, of course, played for Dan Quinn on those Super Bowl teams in Seattle. And I didn't think this was going to happen because I thought they were done at linebacker. I thought that Frankie Louvu and, and Jamin Davis were going to be their guys. Um, but, I and we'll see how they, they line it up, but like, Luvu is a weapon piece. He is a move piece. You can do a lot of different things with him. And with the different packages that teams play now and the creativity in that defensive coaching room, there is a ton of possibility. But Luvu hasn't necessarily proven himself as a call the signals, get everybody organized Mike linebacker to the extent that obviously the best middle linebacker of the last decade and a half has. Wagner, going back to those Seattle teams, has been as good as it gets in the middle. He and Fred Warner, the standard centers for ever in the NFL at this point at that position. And Wagner was PFF's second best linebacker against the run in terms of grade that they gave him last year. So he is every bit still there. And, you know, is this defense going to be different than what they ran in Seattle? Of course, absolutely. Dan Quinn uh, didn't run the same defense in Dallas that he did in Atlanta in Seattle. Uh, and Seattle, but I'm assuming a lot of the language and a lot of the principles are similar, and he is a yet another pro's pro who you know you can rely on to be a positive force in the building, someone who you can rely on to get everybody on the same page. You know your communication on defense is now set because Bobby freaking Wagner is calling the signals for you with that green dot. And then you can use Luvu all over the place. You can use Jamin all over the place. Now, I do think that people have gotten a bit out over their skis when it comes to Jamin to an extent Luvu. These guys are not Micah Parsons. Nobody is. Micah Parsons is essentially a full-time defensive end that they creatively use to develop matchups across the defensive line as a pass rusher in certain situations. Luvu and Davis are not that. They are going to line up at edge sometimes, perhaps, they, but that will be more of as a blitzer. They will be out there with a lot of other defensive linemen uh, and then some other linebackers. It will not be like, oh, he is lining up as a defensive end. Jamin Davis or Frankie Louvu are never putting their hand in the dirt in the way that Michael Parsons does. So it's not that, but the more creativity and the more move pieces you have, the more creative you can have and generate pressure, which is the name of the game. And they're going to do that this year without traditional edge players. They don't have a Parsons. They didn't sign Daniel Hunter. Yes, Dante Fowler has uh, some history of getting after the quarterback. Dorrance Armstrong, the last couple of years, has had 16 total sacks between the two years. Like these, They have some guys with pass rush juice, but you need the guys that threaten. And Bobby Wagner allows Luvu and, to an extent, Jamin to be those guys. And I am fascinated to see how they line it up. Like, I think sometimes they're going to have three down linemen. Sometimes they'll have four. Sometimes they'll have five. They'll mug the A-gaps. Like, they now have the ability to do a lot of stuff. And, by the way, I haven't even mentioned Jeremy Chin, who they signed, who I think is going to live in the box. So they have versatile pieces. And now the centerpiece that kind of is the sun at the center of that ecosystem that all these other pieces will rotate around. Your Quan Martins, your Jeremy Chins, your Frankie Louvus, uh, your your Jamin Davises, but also your Deron Allen or Deron Payne and John Allen's. Like those guys can also line up inside, outside, have some position flex uh, in a good way. Position versatility. I'm sorry, that's the term we promised we would use. Not position flex. Position versatility because we are scarred by position flex from last year. But it, you need something that is central that anchors all of that. Bobby Wagner is that anchor. And now, breaking news, moments ago, the commanders have that anchor, and it is as good of an anchor as you could have possibly asked for, maybe in the whole league, not named Fred Warner, and certainly available in this stage of free agency. And I love getting a veteran to be that guy who has seen a bunch and can keep everything organized, as opposed to seeing if you can get lucky and find one in the draft. And maybe you still draft one that can train under and go to Bobby Wagner school uh, for the future. But this is uh, really an, a phenomenal job 
by certainly Adam Peters. It gets credit as the general manager, but this has got to also be the Dan Quinn effect as well as they have that personal relationship. I would also add that it is very clear that guys want to be here, and that is massive. Anthony, how much time do we have left in the show? 10 seconds? Uh, we have 40 seconds. 40 uh, seconds. 55-30. Yep. 55 30. All right, so we have, we have uh, 30 seconds. Anthony, I will give you like 15 of them because you are hyped about this move. To be honest, Craig, I'm at a loss for words. I still haven't even wrapped my head around the signing, but I said this early in the show. What if we get Bobby Wagner? <laughs> and look, there it is. What if? What else do you want to say, Anthony? You have the power. What if? What else? All right. What if we get Tyron Tyron Smith? What if we get Stephon Gilmore, Xavier Howard? Anthony, you oh! moron. What if, the correct answer is: What if we win the lottery? What if we win the Super Bowl? Oh my God! We'll see you tomorrow. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Gates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.